It's medication time. Medication time. Uh, this review is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, this is the Academy Award winner for Best Picture of 1975. Uh, it swept that year. It, it won Best Picture, and it won Best Director for Milos Forman, uh, Best Actor for Jack Nicholson, Best Actress Louise Fletcher, um, as well as Adapted Screenplay, adapted, of course, from uh, uh, Ken Casey's uh, famous novel. Uh, the movie definitely is a departure from the novel, um, and, you know, kind of how the movie got started, of course, uh, uh, Kirk Douglas, uh, he actually adapted the novel into a play, uh, in, in which he starred as uh, Randall P. McMurphy, um, which, you know, had had an okay run, not like a, a, a breakthrough success or anything like that, but enough to kind of put it on the map and, and kind of spark a little bit of interest uh, in getting it made into a film. Uh, but by that time, of course, uh, Kirk Douglas had gotten a little bit old, um, so he kind of stepped down from the role of R.P. McMurphy, stepped down from kind of controlling uh, Michael Douglas, his son, uh, ended up producing the film, and got Jack Nicholson to star as R.P. McMurphy. And honestly, I, I cannot picture anybody else but Jack, the man, Jack playing uh, uh, R.P. McMurphy. He made the role his own. It's an iconic performance. Uh, probably my favorite Jack Nicholson performance of all time. Uh, definitely, I know many would agree with me on that one. Um, just because he's, he's such a force in nature in this movie. He is a, a live, snapping wire. He is incredible. He is otherworldly. Uh, that's how good he is in this movie. Um, this, for sure, he, like one of my all-time favorites, for sure. Uh, top ten, maybe even top five movies of all time. That's how how much I love this movie. It's it's just such an incredible film. Um, probably my f personal favorite uh, for uh, best picture uh, winners of the Academy Awards. So, you know, uh, we're, we're going on to the 86th Academy Awards this year. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely a lot of good movies that have won, and maybe not so good ones. <coughs> Crash, um, but. Um, yeah, I, there's something about this movie that uh, keeps me coming back to it, keeps me uh, re-experiencing this movie. I, I just saw it on Blu-ray for the first time this year, which was a great experience. You know, I've seen it on VHS, DVD. Uh, definitely Blu-ray is, is the way to go from this point forward. Uh, just such a fantastic movie. And it, it is kind of... It's a fairly simple premise, basically. You know, uh, R.P. McMurphy is kind of... Uh, bad boy rebel and you know he's he's acting up in, in prison so when when we meet him he's, he's coming into the uh, mental institution uh, for the first time uh, kind of mm, sort of his plot or ploy or, or just kind of going with the flow maybe of you know hey what, what's better mental institution or prison Duh, prison or <laughs> mental institution i should say um so he he's happy to go along with it happy to you know act a little crazier than maybe he really is but then maybe he is a little bit crazy or maybe he isn't that's kind of the uh, uh conundrum of the movie so you don't really you know get the sense that he's somewhat mentally ill but definitely mcmurphy is mm, something else he, he's not for lack of a better term of his time uh, you know, the, the world the world around him is crazy, not him, and, and, and this mental institution that uh, he gets confined to, it's, it's kind of a, uh, you know, uh, representative of, of that, uh, basically. Uh, of course, the uh, fellow uh, inmates in, in the institution includes a who's who of uh, great actors. you got Vincent Chiavalli, uh, you got Danny DeVito, uh, Christopher Lloyd, uh, some really, really uh, good actors there. Um, and... You know, kind of what works so well about the movie is kind of Milos Forman's approach uh, to the scenes of their interactions, because that's really key to the movie. I mean, while it's it's definitely not like a super complicated plot, there's definitely, you know, some twists and turns sort of along the way. There's some uh, s standout scenes, basically, like certain chapters of the movie that are definitely highlights. Um but a lot of it is in in their interactions, and especially like the best scenes of the movie are the group scenes, you know, with Nurse Ratchet and and uh, the the entire group doing their you know uh, sessions, their their uh, their little talks each day, and kind of expressing themselves and and kind of what Milos Forman did was uh, keep cameras on everybody at all times, you know, just to to not miss a moment, to to always keep them wondering, is the camera on me? Are they going to look for you know a reaction shot or something like that? Um, 
and you know keeping it real basically that was kind of his his goal for the movie uh to to keep it genuine um and you know even with jack going somewhat over the top which he's known for doing it's absolutely 100 percent real for this character this is an over-the-top person this is a person whose lust for life and absolute madness uh definitely you know elevates above what some would consider normal and you know kind of the I'm going into spoilers here, but kind of like the uh, uh, the grand revelation of McMurphy and his experiences is that everyone around him, uh, everybody, they're voluntary. They're absolutely in there for you know w out of their own personal volition. They they signed up, and you know they just can't manage in their own lives. Um, you know, in including um, Billy, uh, played by Brad Dorf, who is fantastic in the movie. He was nominated for best. Uh, supporting actor, uh, one of his earlier roles, uh, definitely one of his few dramatic roles, sort of like, he, he's kind of an actor who I would equate to uh, uh, Christopher Walken uh, in many ways, like, he has this current persona about him where he's like kind of, uh, he's eccentric, you know, he always kind of shows up and you're like, oh, hey, yeah, 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 and he's Chucky, of course, um, but here he's like, absolutely straight uh w which i love and, and you know maybe something about this performance you know uh, kind of took a lot out of him so he wished to you know uh, go a little bit more you know fancy free i guess um in in future performances um uh, but this is an absolute career best uh, from dwarf though he's done uh, exceptional work in the future but you know there's something about the, the billy character that uh, i really love and and, and really kind of meshes well with um the Randall P. McMurphy persona, because in a lot of ways, I mean, this is a movie where a lot of the relationships have, you know, implicit meanings to them, but, you know, in a lot of ways, McMurphy sees a lot of himself, or really, like, kind of like a version of himself uh, in Billy, and he wants to bring out of him, you know, the joy that he feels in life, and the freedom that, that he wants to feel in life, and it does drive him absolutely bonkers to know that people are in there voluntarily, it's, it's nuts, it's insane, which one of you nuts has got any guts, you know, that's, that's his, you know, saying, um, he's just spectacular in the movie, Jack and, and, uh, Brad Dorf, their, their chemistry is great, um, and the chemistry between Jack and, uh, Louise Fletcher, uh, Nurse Ratched, um, you know, as they kind of become enemies, like, so it, it becomes this kind of thing where, you know, Jack, uh, uh, R.P. McMurphy, uh, his goal and his bet with, with the other, uh, uh patients in, in the asylum, um, you know, how, how much can I piss her off? How much can I, I go against her and go against her stupid little rules, uh, to just drive her absolutely to the point of, you know, get this bug out of her ass, get her jumping off the walls, you know, whatever um which he which he, he finds surprisingly that uh, she can work against him a, a lot uh, better than he expects her to um because he's you know put in his place in, in quite a few moments but in, in other moments he kind of gets little one-ups on her which is great and so it kind of escalates and escalates and escalates um and then there's ratchet care she's just like you know uh Louise Fletcher, she's fantastic in the movie. Uh, of course, she won the Oscar, and uh, the big thing about her speech uh, when she uh, won, she's like, uh, I loved having you all hate me so much. And it's absolutely true. This is a character that you do love to hate. Um, because, you know, she is, in, in so many ways, she is the villain of the movie. Um, but in, in other ways, I mean, if you look at it through her perspective, she's doing her job. You know, she believes she's, you know, helping these people who, who really need help. And by, you know, setting these rules, setting these routines, uh, bringing order uh, into life, that's how she's able to uh, keep everything, you know, uh, in, in like a certain type of, uh, you know, sanity amongst the insanity. Um, so, you know, I can totally see how, you know, one person would watch this movie, see an absolute bitch, horrible villain, evil character, and another would see, well, you know, this person's just kind of misunderstood. So th that's kind of the key to the character. Um, but ultimately, she's the antagonist. And, you know, I, you could probably argue for the movie that, um, you know, uh, the Louise Fletcher character, Nurse Rat, she's kind of this motherly figure against these poor, repressed white male characters, you know. And you can interpret it that way, sure. I mean, there's definitely uh, high high elements of male insecurity about uh, every, everything going on in the movie, which, fair enough, if, if you interpret it that way. Um, 
but you know it, it is I, I do honestly believe there is a higher meaning uh, to the nurse ratchet character and her interactions with with the uh, the uh, patients and McMurphy uh, himself uh, in a way, she is sexless. She's genderless. Like she, she, yes, she is a woman, but you know, if she was a male character, it would be kind of the same uh, symbolic stance that this character takes, because ultimately, Nurse Ratched is an authority figure, yeah, in in this world, this like tiny like microcosm of a world that these people uh, have created for each other and for themselves, and are, are so reliant on it, they don't know any other life other than that. Um, but that's kind of what McMurphy's purpose serves. So she, you know, Nurse Ratchet is, is order, is, you know, subservience. And, and uh, McMurphy's role is, you know, breaking free, living life, and, you know, uh, just living, basically, which is such an important, you know, lesson, that, not lesson, but, you know, uh, trait of his personality that he tries to, uh, you know, uh, and uh, bring to these these uh, people, um, and you know the movie. It's it is this you know self contained kind of thing, but I think it does kind of represent higher kind of uh, you know ideals about the world. The whole world is this insane asylum. The whole world is like that. We're all trapped in our own little kind of routines, uh, things we have to tell ourselves to, to make sure everything's okay, that we're doing things right, uh, walk, walk this one line, um, but, you know, we're, we're missing out on life itself, which, which I think McMurphy is an archetype to, to remind us of, of that, you know, life is worth living and, and not, uh, you know, just to kind of walk in the straight line, following orders, you know, things like that. So there is a, a lot of you know, rebellious themes to the character, and and more than that, it is about freedom and it is about life and it is about a lust for life that he has so strongly, and these characters have so minimally um, that it causes this this huge clash. And you know, when the movie does uh, get to where it's going, um, and you know, kind of uh, the, the tragedy that that occurs, I mean, it it definitely hits hard, and you kind of wonder if if there's any possibility that it would turn out any other way than, than it does in, in this movie, which is hard to say. Um, because, you know, the old saying, the, the, the flame that uh, burns twice as bright uh, burns out uh, twice as fast. Um, I don't think that's the correct expression, but you know what I mean. Um, basically, that's the expression. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's something to be said of the McMurphy character. Um, and so I liked his uh, kind of... Uh, rivalry with Nurse Ratched, and I liked his uh, kind of camaraderie amongst the other uh, patients in in the uh, asylum and, and the institution. I mean, um, and Billy, of course, with their relationship, which I thought was very sweet, very uh, either kind of like father son or brotherly. It's it's hard to define, but I do think you know he does see aspects of his self in him, and, and he wants to to bring that out. Uh, maybe selfishly so. Maybe you know he's thrusting this this lust for life uh, onto them when maybe they don't necessarily need it or want it. So it's it's hard to say. Um, but definitely, I I do think the absolute key, the absolute heart of the movie uh, is is with Chief, uh, the deaf and dumb Indian, um, who who was uh, the narrator of, of the novel, like Ken Casey's novel. I, I think he's gone on record. Uh, or he had gone on record saying that uh, he did not like the film version at all. He boycotted it because he thought it was of such importance that the story be told through Chief's perspective, uh, that the movie ruined that. And then the movie kind of does a little bit of a trick. Like, y you think he's deaf and dumb, and, you know, you, you're kind of, again, spoilers, you're, like, put off guard and totally surprised uh, when it turns out, no, no, he's he's just uh, fanking it all, and, you know... Uh, he had them all fooled, you know, and, you know, I, I, I can see where, you know, Ken Casey would come from, because it's his novel, it's his baby, it's his legacy, you know, he, he, he would be very protective of that, obviously, um, but the movie itself, as its own entity, um, I mean, I think it works great in the movie, I think it, it works perfectly, um, you know, with, with that twist, and, you know, also just, you know, through the aspect of the character himself, like, he 
does it um, seemingly just because it's it's easier that way and you know he doesn't have to spell out through narration or exposition at all uh, how envious he is of the McMurphy character and how he even says you're you're much bigger than me um, and you know he, he he explains very very briefly you know about his own life and kind of the tragedy and you know the abuse that that he suffered and kind of what's caused him uh, to get where he is in, in that area of his life um, so when it does come to the ending you know it, it, it is a moment of triumph like it is tragic and it is triumph I, I can't think of any other movie that has balanced tragedy and triumph uh, as perfectly as this movie does like it's it's very very uh, you know the ending I just can't explain the emotions I feel with the ending and it's definitely a high a high uh, emotion uh, that I feel because you know I do feel like uh, uh, the Christopher Lloyd character where he's like yeah yeah uh, but you know I, I feel emotional I you know I want to ball my eyes out because it is sad but it, it is also joyous and you know, it is exactly what the title uh, promises, that one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And, you know, that's symbolic, and, and that's meaningful, and that's, you know, uh, leaves an impression on me um, as a viewer. And, you know, I, I kind of take that to heart, and it gives me hope as a person, as a viewer. So, you know, I think this movie, as, as hugely entertaining as, as it is, um, as funny as it can be, like, it is a comedy and a drama all in one, really. Um, but, you know, I, I do think it has a higher philosophy about life, and there's not too many movies, uh, you know, I could name a few, um, that, you know, try as I may, try as I might, get a higher appreciation out, out of life and kind of uh, think to myself about what, what life means to me and, and what freedom means to me and, you know, uh, how, how we create our own little routines and, and we create our own uh, little cages, our own little mental asylums in our own little life. So it's, it's, it's quite something to think about. If you don't want to think about it too hard, you don't have to because it's an enjoyable and entertaining enough movie without you know, having to analyze it. You, know, you don't have to analyze it. Um, but I, I think there is deeper meaning uh, to be taken from it. Um, so, you know, as, as different as it is from the Ken Casey novel, which was, was more, you know, we'll, we'll put it this way. Uh, the movie is a product more of, of the 70s uh, and a movement there, while the novel is, is more a product of the 60s, you know, with drug experimentation, kind of psychedelic uh, uh, mel uh, melding of your perception of reality or, or whatever. I mean, whatever. Um, but, you know, the, the movie definitely is its own thing, ultimately. Um, so I think it's, it's a triumph of, of cinema, in, in my opinion. I think Milos Forman delivered a masterpiece. I mentioned in another review that I did watch uh, Amadeus uh, for the first time recently. Uh, as great as Amadeus was, and I'm definitely going to watch it more and more times, um, has nothing on this movie. Very few movies uh, have anything on this movie. I think it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant film. I love it to pieces. It, it really is quite a, a fantastic movie, and, and, and you know, there, it's just like the little details about the movie, little lines of dialogue, little scenes. You know, like I love the scene when uh, you know uh, McMurphy is trying to vote to, to to watch the baseball game, and he gets outvoted, and he's like, "Yeah, you know what? I, I, I'll, I'll I'll get the one up on you. We'll all imagine uh, that we're watching a baseball game, and it's such a nice little moment." And you know, uh, when he's trying to uh, lift up, you know, the uh, uh, the fountain base. Basically, and he's like, at least I tried, damn it, at least I tried. Uh, I love it. There's so many great little moments, and, you know, uh, the actors, you know, who play the, the uh, uh, inmates, and uh, not the inmates, the, the patients um, in the asylum give great supporting performances, and it, it, the movie wouldn't work without those performances. Like, you know, you get a sense of, of their you know, ways of life before McMurphy enters, and you kind of get a sense of it after, and definitely a change has occurred um, in their lives, and uh, and in Nurse Ratchet's life uh, as, as well, so I mean, definitely, if, if you want to think of her as the villain, definitely rightly so, she definitely is the villain, I mean, she's, you know, thwarting McMurphy at every chance she can get, and, and rightly so, because that's her job as, as the authority figure, um, but it's his defiance against authority that that defines him as, as such a unique character and you know kind of a higher level of you know what he represents. Uh, so I, I do think it's a beautiful and meaningful movie, uh, filled with great performances, uh, filled with just you know absolute 
wonderment and, and lust for life. And that's something I truly appreciate. You don't see that too much uh, in, in movies. You know, uh, some movies, if this movie were in any other hands, it could end up quite depressing. But I don't think this is a depressing movie. I think it's a, a joyous movie with sad moments. Um, but an absolutely joyous movie, and it's absolutely one of my favorites. I cannot. I. I'll. I'll. I've tried here for what twenty minutes. I. I can't describe how much I love it. I truly can't. Um, but it's just one of my all-time favorites. It means a lot to me. I think it's a great movie. Um, did it deserve all those Oscars? You're goddamn right it did. Um, definitely. I mean, I've. I've talked about this in other videos. 1975 definitely was a tricky year. Um, a lot of great movies. Nashville, Dog Day Afternoon, uh, uh, Jaws, Barry Lyndon, all great films. Um, but this one, I think rightly so, uh, it, it won the award because, you know, this is one of the all-time greats. I do think it is one, or, or if not, you know, at least my personal uh, favorite of, of movies to have ever won the Academy Award. Jack's a legend, uh, Milos Forman, great director. Uh, just fantastic work all around. So I, I can't say a bad word about it. Um, you know, maybe it has a few th flaws. Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen the movie so many times, i got to tell you. Um, you know, you start to see continuity errors. Um, like there's a one scene near the end. This is, again, sort of spoilers. Um, but, uh, you know, where, where Jack is over the edge and he he jumps towards Nurse Ratchet. He chokes her. Um, but when he jumps to her, his hat falls off. Um, and you can, like, see it fall off on the ground. Um, and he's choking her, choking her, and it, it cuts to a shot of her, you know, getting choked. Um, then it cuts back to him, and his hat's back on. Go back and watch the movie. Watch that part. You'll see what I'm talking about. Continuity error. Oh, my God. Um, so you know what? You've watched the movie too much. When, um, and, you know, also, uh, one of the probably complaints about the movie, not complaints, but just like a little nitpick, uh, is uh, the fishing scene that maybe goes on a little bit too long, kind of in the same vein of, uh, you know, the psychedelic freakout scene in uh, uh, Midnight Cowboy. You know, it's a scene that uh, you can see why they put it in there. Um, and definitely the scene serves its purpose. Like, you know, it gives you an idea of, well, they can leave any time they want, but, you know, in their heads, they're, they're already back at, at the institution. Um, but maybe it went on a little bit too long, you know, Christopher Lloyd playing with the fish, you know, swimming around, whatever. Um, I think it works okay, but, you know, not my favorite scene in the movie, um, but definitely served its purpose. Um, you know, little, little tiny nitpicks uh, that you may have, nothing major. Um, you know, e even the Mona Lisa has a you know, a tear in it or two, I don't know. But I think this is a masterpiece. This is one of the best films ever, 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 ever made, in my opinion. Um, certainly one of the best products of the 70s. Certainly one of the best films to ever win the Oscar for Best Picture. And certainly a personal favorite of mine. So, yeah, um, I've rambled on enough. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed my review. Uh, this is going to be my last review uh, for the 31 Days of Oscar series. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is one of the best, one of the greatest. Uh, if you haven't watched it, please uh, check it out. Um, so that'll do it. Thanks for watching.